Okay, welcome to another Halloween special. I really enjoy drawing the skulls and the human skeleton in general. I've done a more complicated tutorial on how to draw the human skull from the front and a simplified version. Both of those will be linked down in the description. So if you want to check those out at the end of this video, because I'm going to show you today how to do like a simple side view of the skull and then maybe shade it to get it slightly more up to the sort of realistic stage as well. But I'm going to keep it a little bit on the simpler side. If you want to make sure that you see all my tutorials in the future, make sure to click the little bell symbol next to the subscribe button. And that way you'll guarantee that you'll get notified of all my future videos and as I release them. Okay, so I'm starting off with an A4 blank canvas and I'm using a 6B pencil. I'm using almost a, a black, but not quite, just a dark gray. I'm trying to replicate the effect of a pencil really, so that will do. Turn the size of the pencil almost to full. I'm gonna turn the opacity down a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the, the rough kind of outline for a basic side view of a skull. The most important shape in order to do this is gonna be a rough kind of circular shape. So it doesn't have to be perfect because this is only gonna be a guide. We get some kind of rough circle in like this. Then what we're gonna do is divide it in half horizontally and vertically. Again, this is only rough because these are not, they're gonna be the finished lines. We'll erase these later on. Now this is gonna tell us where to put things on our drawing. So the first thing this is going to help us with is obviously the top of the skull, but it's gonna guide us as to where to put in some of the features on the skull as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in the brow ridge at this point. So we're on the halfway line, and this is gonna be the front of the skull. So we'll put in the brow ridge here. So it just protrudes a little bit here, and then it might have a slight bump for the top of the forehead as well. Now, obviously, we're depending on whether this is a male or a female, the size of the brow ridge may vary. There's not an awful lot of difference between male and female skulls, but the main thing that you can judge it by is that brow ridge. So depending on how smooth you make it, how protruding you make it, is gonna make it look more male or more female. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a line straight down, and that's gonna give us the line where most of the features are going to sit. Now we're not gonna take it down too far. We want to create pretty much an angle like this. It goes to this point here. So it's not quite a 45 degree angle, it's a bit of a smaller angle than that here. So it's probably more like about a 30, 35 degree angle, something like that. And that's gonna be where the chin sits down at the bottom. And then I'm gonna divide this space into thirds, like so, roughly. This is gonna be where the, the center of the teeth is gonna be, and this is gonna be where the bottom of the nose is gonna be. So we're gonna bring down from the brow ridge here, and it's gonna stick out. Remember, this is just gonna be the, the bone section. Normally on the nose, you'd have cartilage and stuff as well, but this is just gonna be the bone that would appear on the skull. And this is the only section, it's just a bump that's gonna stick out like that, then it's gonna come back in, and then it's gonna come back out again, because this is gonna be where the, the, the gums and the upper teeth are gonna be here. Then it's gonna come down again, we're just gonna stick out for the, the chin like that. So for this shape, we can just have it going slight dip in the middle like that. And then this is gonna be where the jaw goes. Now the only thing that's gonna change about the circle when it gets around to this point, it's not gonna go all the way around there. It's gonna cut in about halfway. So we'll bring it up a little short. So we round it off a bit soon like this. And then we can take this point up beyond that line, but not all the way up to that halfway line. So about there. We obviously need to get the eye socket in. So this is the brow ridge. So the eye socket is gonna come from there, like that. We're then going to have the sort of cheekbone. So that is gonna roughly point towards the, the nose, but it's gonna angle down like this. We're then going to have a section that follows the eye socket, roughly. So this is gonna be the, the section of bone at the side of the, the head that actually protects the eye and the socket there. So this is gonna swing up like that and this is gonna follow it pretty much. So it gets slightly narrow as it goes towards the end there. So the bottom jaw, remember we're gonna have the teeth roughly in this section. So the bottom jaw is gonna follow along and then it's gonna curve up like that. And then it's gonna be another sweeping curve that comes in like that and that's actually gonna be pretty much a gap. So when we get to here, we can curve this off. So a lot of these, although we put straight lines in initially, they do have slight curves to them. So I'm not gonna to get too complicated with the the neck bones for this. I'm just gonna keep it quite straightforward and not get into too much of those fiddly details. We just want to imagine that the, the skull has become separated from the rest of the skeleton. But what I'm gonna do for this, I'm gonna start sharpening up the pencil. So I've got it on quite a broad, large 6B. I'm just gonna do some narrower details now. So I might zoom in a touch so I can just start to refine some of these details a little bit. Most of the basic shapes are there in fact, 
So these would curve behind this section, so you can't really see it. There might just be a little bit that's there. There might also be another bit of a, a shape that comes in there. There's going to actually be like a, a hole here. For those people that are more anatomically educated, you can perhaps tell me what the purpose of that gap in the skull is. And then the bottom of the skull is going to come in something like this. So if I just start to redefine some of those shapes. And now I'm going to shift the focus over to the teeth. So you can see that the front of the teeth, it goes from the chin, it dips in, and then it's, it comes back out for the teeth, and then it goes back in before it gets to the nose. So when we get to the teeth, obviously the, the top teeth are going to protrude a little bit more in most people's teeth. Now clearly individuals are going to have different types of features. It may be that some people's teeth overlap in a different way, and it's certainly a feature of some people's jawline that the bottom teeth uh, come forward, jut out a little bit more, or the teeth meet more perfectly at the front. But for the benefit of a general kind of rule, we're going to do the top teeth slightly sticking forward. We're going to put some of the, the teeth gum line in here, and then we get some broader teeth at the back. And it's going to be roughly the same at the bottom. So maybe get about a one, two, three, four, five teeth in there, something like that. And these back teeth certainly should kind of meet. People's teeth are different, so how you crowd these in is dependent on the kind of, I guess, the person that, you know, whose skull it belonged to, but you want to be careful. You don't want to cram too many in. So the number of teeth shouldn't vary too much. It's going to be more about the, the kind of angles that they, they adopt. Okay, so that's going to give you the, the basics, the outlines. I'm just going to spend a little bit more time now going into some of the shading details. Now, if you're, all you're after is a simple side view, then that's probably going to be sufficient. But if you want a little bit more depth, a bit more realism, then I'm going to add some of the shading just for the benefit of that. So this section is going to jut out more, but there's going to be like a hollow here in which it goes further back so you get some more of a shaded area in this region. And it goes really kind of shadowed in this area particularly. You don't really see a lot of what's going on under here at all. I'm just going to use the eraser slightly just to redefine some of these shapes a touch and get rid of some of the guidelines here and there perhaps. So I'm not going to be too precious about it because it is just a working drawing really. I'm going to go back to the pencil and I'm going to start continuing some of the shading. So underneath the, the jaw here, the chin, there'll be a slight area of shadow that's slightly broader at the front and then thins at the back. Maybe underneath here, there'll be a bit of shadow. Underneath this again, so just like it's a hollow here, this bit is further back than this section, so you will find you get a bit more shading under here too. And then this bit is even further back than those two sections, so this gets a touch more shadow. Clearly the bottom of this is like a spherical shape, so the underneath section here is definitely going to have some shadow. The light's roughly speaking coming from above. Okay, I could go into more detail, but I just wanted to give a rough outline of how you can construct the side view of the skull with some basic shapes. And obviously with a bit of refinement and an image to study from um, and a bit more time, then you can really go to town with some of the finer details. There would obviously be details such as cracks in the skull. There'll be sort of like a seams in which the different sections of the skull would all fit together. So you could start to suggest those in there as well. Lots of little details that you could add that would perhaps just add a bit more depth and, and realism in there as well. I'm not going to town with every single detail, but this just hopefully will give you a bit more of an understanding of how to construct the basic shapes. 
please check out the other views of the school that are down in the description. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to those people that supported me over on my Patreon page. There is also a link down to that in the description as well. Do remember to click the bell subscription symbol next to the subscribe button and I shall catch you back here next time. See you later.